<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> that was the best comedy I've seen all year. Oh my god. Oh. So, uh, so yeah. Um, <laughs> um, a movie like this, I mean, you know what you're getting. I mean, I, I said this a little bit with the, uh, uh, what was it? Happy Death Day review. And this one's kind of in the same boat. Is that it's kind of hard to review because you can't just come out here and go, oh, that was stupid and terrible and far fetched and blah blah. Because if you paid money to go see it, you pretty much know that's what you're getting. I mean, who saw trailers for this and went, wow, I bet that's going to be a really well acted, really tight screenplay. I mean, who who says that? You know what you're freaking getting into. So, you can't get too mad at some of the aspects of this movie because they're it's right there, guys. You know what's coming. Um, <laughs> and in truth, so, first of all, let me say, so yes, this is a bad movie, but it's it's the good kind of bad in that it's laughably bad. I'm not notice I didn't say it was entertainingly bad or, you know, fun bad. It's just laughable. You know. Um I was hoping a little bit more in the vein of good uh bad, you know, that kind of, you know, at least it's enjoyable to watch, but it it, it didn't make it. It, it crashed on, on arrival. Um so anyway, so in the future, and you know, before I get to that, okay, let's see if we can play along, because this, this is brought to us by Dean Devlin, I can't remember his name now, but one of the co-creators of Independence Day. And since then, films such as The Day After Tomorrow, 2012, I think there's another big disaster one in there. Um, so let's see if we can play along. So, in the future, man being a jackass uh, has destroyed the environment because we didn't listen. We just didn't listen to all the scientists and the warning signs and such. We have destroyed the environment and the weather system, and the weather system is now mad at us. So, man decides that for the first time to join together, again, check that one off the, the checklist, to join together to build and create the technology to control the weather seemingly overnight to stop all of the terrible, terrible weather from raining down on us. And it was an international team, but lo, those evil, evil Americans and those crafty, crafty Republicans didn't want the, the space station to be run internationally. They wanted to own it all because we're all such mustache twirling villains. And so we kick out the cowboy-like scientist who knows better than all of us. And lo, three years later there are malfunctions on the space station and the cowboy scientist who is of course a terrible father single father because he's divorced his wife so he he has a strained relationship with his with his child of course now has to be called back into action to fly up and stop the geo storms from happening ho 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 so yeah if you if you've seen any of this guy's other movies you're probably noticing the similarities the dude he, 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 this is basically the third time this movie's been made. <laughs> you know? Um, and the difference with this one, as opposed to like 2012 or Day After Tomorrow, all of which are awful movies, but laughably awful, I must say, is that instead of the the weather systems being kind of what they should be, you know, a a natural phenomenon that, uh, you know, doesn't have an agenda that is just happening and we, so therefore you never know when it's going to come at you or, or what's going to hit next. Uh, this one, it's, it's all part of some evil plot. Somebody's tampered with the system. And because of that, because of that twist, that is what makes this not 
a f not bad in a fun way. Because at least with all those other ones, you know, 2012 being kind of the best example, you had the the massive destruction as silly and as terrible and as CGI fake as it all looked. Those were at least entertaining to watch. This one, if you've seen the trailers, you've seen the best parts of the movie because that's why people go to movies like this to see the massive destruction. I mean, it's why they've gone to, uh, it's why they've gone to disaster movies, you know, since disaster movies, you know, were a thing. You, know, you went, you go to the Poseidon Adventure to see the boat tip over. You go to the Towering Inferno to see the Towering Inferno. You know, you go to a movie like this to see the Geostorm. And you've seen the Geostorm and all the best parts of it in the trailer. The rest of it is filled up with this whodunit mystery filled with the trademark bland one-note characters played by you know, the who's who of who's that of Hollywood, you know. So you don't care about any of it. You can't identify who anybody is. And of course, the, the villain turns out to be the most famous guy in the credits. You know, so you're not even really entertained because when the when the good stuff is happening, again, you've seen it, you've seen the trailers, so you're like, oh, okay, so here's the part where that happens. You know, and the rest of it is like, oh, well, I sure hope they find out who who stole those codes and who's rewired this and who's rewired that. You know. And we got, okay, you know, normally I try to do spoiler terror, don't do spoilers, but, you know, who, who gives a crap? Nobody's seeing this piece of shit, so, I mean, I don't care. Um, so, of course, the, the, the villain turns out to be Ed Harris as, like, some guy in the government. He's not, like, the president. I forget what he is. He's Secretary of State or something like that. Who has gone through this whole thing to kill the president and the entire line of succession so he can become president. Now, is it just me, or does that seem like using a bazooka to kill a mosquito? There are other ways to do this than to murder everyone and make it out to look like an accident. It reminds me very much of that quote from Game of Thrones. This guy would burn us all down if it meant he could be king of the ashes. And that's what he was going to be. If this plan went through, he was going to be king of, like, every time they showed the map, this is also what I found funny, is every time they showed the map of where all these geostorms were going to hit, it wipes out pretty much everything, except for, like, the, the, uh, the west western part of America, not California, California gets taken, just kind of the western states, and most of Alaska. Like, every time they showed Alaska, it was all in the unpopulated areas. So there were going to be some polar bears that were going to be pretty fucked, but everybody else was going to be fine. And that, my friends, is how Alaska became the capital of America. Who's laughing now, bitches? That is something I've always loved about all of these movies, from, from the first one when they did Independence Day on to this one. Every time they show a map of, you know, where all the disasters are going to hit, watch those movies. They never hit Alaska. Or if they do, it's like always in this unpopulated part. So it's like, yeah, dog. That is how we became the United States. Who's the joke state now? Uh, so yeah, um, so this movie is, like, not particularly good, um, and I'm having a real hard time trying to find, I, this is like the second time I've said this in, in a couple of days, I'm having a real hard time thinking of anything else to really say about this, because again, if you go see this movie, if you've paid money to witness this film, you must know what you're getting, Right? I mean, you're not surprised by what you see or don't see. You know the generic plot. You know the flat characters. You know the the stilted, unrealistic dialogue. You know. I mean, so what do you what do you want? <laughs> you know. I, I guess what gets me about these films and all of them from from day after tomorrow all the way down is even though they all share kind of the exact same plot more or less it's amazing how the one thing they do 
different each time is find different ways to disappoint you. I mean, I find that utterly amazing. Okay, for instance, all right, people, I've heard nothing but bitching, like, online about that Kong Skull Island because the characters weren't, you know, nuanced and subtle. They were big caricatures, you know, played by big actors going real big. And you know why that is? Because it's a freaking King Kong movie. The humans are not supposed to be the focus. They're supposed to be interesting enough to carry you through the scenes with no giant monkeys fighting. And they did that. They did that great. And that is the thing that Independence Day did that none of these other subsequent films that this guy has done have ever been able to accomplish. Independence Day's characters are not subtle. They're not nuanced. They're not. They're all big characters. But the difference is the actors they have playing them are charismatic enough. The, the, the characters are broad enough and played with enough fun that you want to watch them go through it all and you even care about them. Ever since then, they have not had that. They have not had the characters that you're, you know, the big characters played by big actors, you know, given big performances, you know, to kind of go, hey, this is entertaining enough to get me through till the next natural disaster. No, they're all very bland and very, you know, one note. And not, and I, you know, it's not to say the character, again, the characters in Independence Day were one note, but these ones were like exceptionally one note and like the one note that you've seen about a dozen times um but it is funny to watch some of these actors just try you know they're trying but it's like <laughs> the credits are rolling and all i can think is that line from mystery science theater ratio to film obscurity <laughs> you know who knows you know george clooney was in return of the killer tomatoes and went, went on to win an oscar so you know what Maybe someday we're going to see a uh, messy hair Secretary of State guy or blonde James Bond girl or a uh, vaguely descript German girl or the Mexican. That's literally his character. Uh, maybe we'll see one of these actors really give us a brilliant performance one day. And maybe I can flutter my arms so fast I'll be able to achieve liftoff. <laughs> um, and while we're on that subject, why the hell do I know Gerard Butler's name? Why the hell do I know his name? He's top billing in this movie. I know his name, but I can't tell you a single film he's been in other than this. Why do I know his name? You say to me, Gerard Butler. I say to you, yeah, I know him. What about him? Exactly! What about Gerard Butler? Now watch me go home and actually see I've got 20 of his movies on my shelf and he's such a great actor I never really realized it was him. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, so yeah. Uh, Geo and that's the other thing. They never actually have the Geostorm. They tease it like, and they're counting down to it but it never actually happens. And I gotta say I was pretty disappointed in that. It's like I guess we'll see a movie called Geostorm. I don't want to see, you know, the terrible actors doing the, the, the cliche dialogue. I want to see the mother effing Geostorm. Didn't happen. I demand a refund. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this was a bad movie, but you know what? Laughably bad. This isn't, I really have a hard time seeing this on a worst list for me just because how can you get mad at it? Seriously. You you knew what you you get exactly what's on the box. There is not a there there there's no buyer's remorse here because you couldn't have had that much in terms of expectations going in. So I mean, if you're if you're like me and you kind of like these awful movies just for the sake of having something fun to laugh at or something that seems like it's tailor made for riff tracks to get a hold of then my advice is do like I should have done and rent this with a bunch of buddies, have a few drinks, and heckle it yourselves. Heckle fest time, baby. Um, boy, we're, that's rocking it old school. That's rocking it 1995's territory right there, heckle fest. Um, 
but yeah, I you know because I'd say you go see it in the movies, but you can't heckle it in the movies. You know, you got to do this in the privacy of your own home. But uh, you know, obviously, I don't think anyone's going to go see this. There is, you know, it's been out for a while. I mean, the first show of this was at 1:15 on a Sunday, as opposed to noon when the theater opened. So they clearly didn't think that. Uh, that this one was gonna make the grade. So, anyway, so yeah, there it is. It is what it is. You know, you can't get mad too much at it. Uh, so, I was sitting down this morning and kind of looking at some of the stuff coming out between now and December, planning out my last couple weeks of drive home reviews for the year. Uh, so, it looks like we got some fun stuff coming up. So, next week, definitely on the docket, Matt and I are gonna check out Thor couple other things coming out so uh hope everybody has a good week till then drive safe and i'll see you at the movies